So I don't see how what you're saying disagrees with that. I'm fully but familiar like with the research process. I have a sociology degree. Problem is that what you're talking about is a censorship of expression that is literally unprecedented in the Western world. Problem you produce is right children now, who will take care of you, who will so you can wait, love. Stop, and stop. You're oh, narrativizing. Is... No, 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 you're narrativizing right now. You're running off to the sunset. So the problem is like a lot of the stuff you've said to me feels kind of like sussy. I bet if I look through your studies, I'd be able to tear a few of them apart because I have the degree to do so. Like the degree of narrativization that you've engaged in here indicates to me that obviously like these studies are a means to an end for you. Zero percent of you are subscribed. Fix that. We're going to jump into open conversation. There are many studies that are longitudinal in nature that actually do indicate causation. Um, so that's one point. But and even also, then, it should be worth noting that for something like why one might look for pornography in a relationship, it might be difficult to understand what the instigating factor was. So a person can report satisfaction in a relationship, not consume pornography, but then as things in the relationship get kind of worse and they feel kind of distant from their partner, they start to look at porn and they look at porn because they're dissatisfied, not necessarily the other way around. But from a study's perspective, it's really difficult to chart which one caused which. These studies do show that. Like the, these studies are set, the longitudinal ones are set to determine causation. I'm so familiar the, the with the limitation of longitudinal studies. They don't make the correlation causation fallacy disappear. They can track behaviors over long term. But when you're talking about nebulous characteristics like psychological influence, it is legitimately very, very difficult to parse out what is happening and why. Part of the barrier of whether this is publishable research is to justify that through statistical means, through all kinds of experiment setup, um, double blind studies. All of this is part of the research process. So I don't see how what you're saying disagrees with that. I'm fully but familiar like with the research process. I have a sociology degree. The issue is that for something like this topic in particular, self-reporting is the only metric by which you can measure something like the health of a relationship. If people self-report, say, on the cause of their porn usage, you know, you're also relying on their degree of introspection, which is uh, not reliable. But when you're when you're looking at the development of these things, people don't really have a great assessment of why they act the way they do. And I have seen a good deal of research on pornography and its effects on people. And obviously, I don't want to debate with you like specific studies, because then we get really in the weeds in a broad topic. But I'm only pointing out that like, from what I have seen, the idea of a sort of consistent, direct, causative relationship has not been demonstrated in the research that I've looked at. Certainly there are relationships, I wouldn't deny that. Even if there were causative relationships, I don't necessarily think that's a defeater for my positions. But it is complicated. I only mean to say that because it can be very easy to paint a consistent and clear brush when looking from afar. When there's orgasm by male or female and touch through the skin, the skin touching is what generates oxytocin. And that's something that does not exist with masturbation to pornography. You cannot create that kind of pair bond. And that doesn't thing exist about for any kind of masturbation, though, whether or not yeah, you have true. pornography. That's true. I agree. Well, then that's but fine. You masturbate from time to time, and it doesn't contribute to your God-given soulmate potential. No, and then it does. one day you do lay into a girl, and then it does. Uh, well, that's, that's well, like, so you're so you got to sell me on this. I like seeing naked women. Yeah. So you if you didn't have access to porn, you might like, you know, do something to make yourself more attractive so you can get in a stable relationship and you can see naked a naked woman as much as you want. And what if I don't want what if I want to see multiple naked women? Well, Islam has a solution to that because you can marry multiple wives <laughs> in Islam. But I mean, that's well, Even well, if we well then you're cheating. Aside. Okay. Well, so you're cheating. So you can't you can't say like, um, oh yeah, we're going to solve the problem of men and their infidelity by simply allowing a patriarchal, you know, polygamy. No, nah, you can't. That's cheating. It's like we've solved the problem of men cheating. They simply marry their mistresses. No society so, has ever succeeded in banning porn. So the idea of like actually enacting this ban seems weird to me. Um, what's so? I, I guess. We need to talk about the practicality here. You know, you want to ban porn. Again, like, where's the line on this, right? How realistic do the circles have to be? Because that's the thing. The problem is that what you're talking about is, an ex is a censorship of expression that is literally unprecedented in the Western world. There's, there's no comparison to, like, all media that depicts eroticism is gone. Like, that's just such a massive, you know, what about nude art? Uh, uh, simplistic drawings? How detailed does an anatomical drawing have to be before it becomes an issue? I just want to know, because I don't know how this plays out, like, realistically. 
Well, I mean, you, you conceded that there are some restrictions that would be reasonable to restrict porn. Like what? And if, I mean, I can draw the line anywhere and I'd be consistent. Um, where, do, where would you think should we draw the line? You already mentioned child porn. Yeah, that's um, probably pretty bad. Um, I don't want any lines when it comes to like the pornography that we have, though. I want labor laws when it comes to sex workers, but that's not a censorship of pornography. That's uh, labor regulations on its production process. But uh, I, I don't want any curtailing there. But you got to give me an example, because again, like the line on this, the line for like what is determined to be child porn is pretty clear. You have like the age I mean, of the people we can... involved, but like what makes something pornography? Like even the courts haven't figured that out. I mean, we can have like a start of banning all photographic and videographic pornography. Like that can be a line. Like any nudity. Mm -hmm. And like, so what about... Um... Just like with artificial food that the government should ban certain kinds of artificial food because it's too addictive. Then also with pornography at the extreme level, you, you left it vague. It should also be... Restricted. I never said anything about extreme pornography being banned. I don't know what extreme means in this context. Uh, I think that you can make a simple, like, production labor restriction on what chemicals are used for food. That's a production process thing. But porn is art. And I don't think right now the government does very much at all over here in the States to regulate art production. I would be incredibly uncomfortable with that. The idea of, like, the government getting to lean in on every drawing uploaded, everything Which produced... You're, you're fine with the government leaning in when it comes to children being uploaded in, yes. in this kind of pornography. So it, it's not like a technical issue that can't be solved. Well, you can solve it. The question is whether or not in solving it, you do more harm than good. Banning child pornography does more harm than good. Or sorry, does <laughs> clip me, clip me. Banning child pornography does more harm than good. Banning child pornography does more harm than good. Does more good <laughs> than harm. Um, if you, you, that's a pretty simple and easy line to cut down. Uh, you point at it right there, and it's like, okay, we're not gonna allow that, kablamo. People pretty much get behind that. The problem is, when it comes to, like, the right for a free citizen to just put their tits up online, when we talk about banning child pornography, it's because them kids are getting hurt. But if some lady wants to put her tits up on the internet, the only harm that you can point to is some kind of nebulous social degeneracy, which I would never support a law being made to, um, no, to I, crack down on. But my argument didn't appeal to degeneracy. Uh, my argument appealed to the value of pair bonding and the value you of were family. Ad advocating polygamy like five minutes ago. Yeah, it's totally wholesome. Okay, I want to go, this is very much I a you thing. In. You can't pair bond through no, polygamy. No, 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 but uh, the example I gave is imagine like you're in a society that does not have polygamy, but it also pornography has banned. Look at the benefit that is attained. I people don't think there's any benefit. Have, well, let me explain it to you. Like you have people who have this natural sex drive. They can't get this kind of release from pornography. They can look for a mate and they do that by, you know, improving themselves making themselves attractive to a potential mate. So this improves society. What's wrong you with form, convenience? You form a pair bond with someone in a loving relationship. You are happier. You're more satisfied. Okay, so wait, wait, the, you produce wait, the problem, children. The problem you produce is right children now, who will take care of you, who will, so that you can wait, love. Stop, and, stop. You're oh, narrativizing. Is... <laughs> no, no, no. You're narrativizing right now. You're running off to the sunset. Couple of problems here. First of all, this is like arguing restaurants should be banned so people have no choice but to cook food at home, which will teach them cooking skills and improve society. It is true that it's cheaper and more um, learned to cook all your food at home, but frankly, I don't fucking want to. And I do want to see titties online. I like titties. Um, I don't think it's like good to restrict human um, artistic and social development because you believe that there's some kind of like old world social benefit to curtailing certain behaviors that are only harming society in direct ways that translate through human freedom. Also, the idea that people form loving relationships because pornography is not around, this isn't true at all. People love to jerk off about how, like, the relationships used to be better. That's not true even remotely. We have documentation that goes back to the literal Middle Ages about desperate women trapped with abusive men, about, like, spousal violence. Spousal rape wasn't even a crime in the United States till a few decades ago. I'm pretty sure in good parts of the Muslim world it still isn't. So, you, like, you see happy relationships because you deny the people who are victimized in them the ability to, like, 
like divorce or express themselves in any way. It's easy from the top down when you look at statistics. Oh, look at the good people of, I don't know, Saudi Arabia, 0.01% divorce rate. Well, these women are like essentially like ball and chain to their house, you know? It's like th these, these narratives, this is why I say narrativization, right? Because we're telling a story right now. It's like people who talk about how like, oh, back in the Middle Ages, everyone lived together on a farm and they were happy. Like, no, they weren't. Like, things were miserable back then. We have to be critical about the way these institutions manifest because there are very strong social pressures that try to kind of coerce us into viewing them positively. It's almost like a fairy tale, right? At the end of the day, there are plenty of things that can get in the way uh, of a person and like a happy relationship or a marriage. Those factors have been present for basically all of human history. Some of them are less prominent today than they used to be. Some are more prominent. And I think the best way to handle this is to try to give people what they want and make people want to make the healthy choices for themselves rather than denying them the ability to make a choice at all. Because well, that never thing, works. Like, what about the treatment of the porn actors or actresses, whatever you want to call them, call them are they treated decently? No, of course not. We live under capitalism. Right now, a ton of the products that we use are literally made by, like, sweatshop workers and slaves around the world. No, of course not. Pornography is a particularly visible and sometimes very egregious example of a broader problem, which is the mistreatment of workers. Obviously, I want them to be treated as well as possible, and I would support legislation to enforce that. Where do we draw the line on different types of porn, in particular, whether it be age or whether it be animals, in the words of Jank, if the horse enjoys it, is it wrong? Oh, okay. No, I'll yeah, I'll jump right into it. These are like obviously these are incredibly easy lines to distinguish. The di there's a huge difference between the question what line should we draw on pornography when it comes to um, uh, it's it's like content, and what line should we draw on its pornography when it comes to like the people or types of people involved and what was done to them. Like, for example, there's a pretty hard line you can draw for, like, snuff pornography where they kill somebody or something, you know? It's pretty easy. Like, these lines are very clear. I don't think it's at all comparable to, like, banning all pornography. They're so incomparable that it's kind of, like, I, I don't think people understand, like, if anyone's on the fence about this, the logistics of even beginning to fathom what banning pornography would mean, in addition to having never worked anywhere in human history, uh, pornography is just something we sort of species produce, I, I suppose, our species being. But, like, where we draw that line, it would be like the source of, like, the amount of government intervention. We're talking hundreds of billions for online monitoring. Are we going to be doing FBI raids on people's houses because they have hard drives of their girlfriend's, like, sex tapes that they took when they were 27? Like, fuck, I don't know where these lines are drawn, man, but, like, holy shit, it's not good. For, for like, what? Because people are lonely? You stupid shits would be lonely whether or not there was pornography. People love to imagine that if they just had the government step in and get rid of this or that, if you didn't have all the Estfolo femboy hentai to jerk off to, you'd finally be living a decent life. No, you wouldn't. But Everyone minute, likes to blame other problems. A minute, yeah. <laughs> Was it a minute? I was getting into it. Giving you guys a minute 30 on that one. There's a All little right. bit left, Vosh, if you have any other types of porn you want to mention. You would be imagining the, the fucking femboy hentai in your head if you didn't have it online. The problem is with you, alright? Don't you go blaming internet pornography, you loser. Is that specifically to Daniel? No, 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 not him. I'm talking to the audience. This one is on whether or not porn might negatively affect relationships. So let's say it's a monogamous relationship. Let's say, yeah, old fashioned. They're committed to each other. They're not open. Uh, they're not swinging or anything like that. What do you guys think? Wash first. I think it depends on the relationship. It can be harmful depending on their standards, but I think a healthy relationship should be accommodating of porn use. The idea that like anytime you look at porn, it like makes you think less of your partner or whatever. I don't buy that shit. Um, the idea that it's like cheating your partner, I don't buy that shit. Again, like, it's people's preferences. You should respect your partner's preferences and talk about it and, you know, find out what you're both okay with and, and the relationship if you're not. But, like, I don't know. I, I it's, it, like, so many people consume porn. It seems like it's easier these days to just be like, oh, well, you like porn? Well, I like porn. Like, maybe we can jerk each other off while we look at porn together someday or whatever. It's, you know, it's like a sex toy, except it's on the screen. Who cares? Also, Surely I think it's the right of those people if they want to look at porn, even if it ends the relationship. I, as, a, as a freedom lover myself, you know, if you want people to have good relationships, you can't just have the state hold a gun to their head and go, Don't engage in any behaviors that might compromise the, the legitimacy of their social institution. No, if you want people to have good relationships, that has to be born out of their individual free will. They have to choose to act in the good way towards each other. Um, yeah, but you want to help them make the right decision by having kind of social conventions. Yeah, and not that's laws. another big problem with, yeah, social conventions go hand in hand with laws but i mean most of society... i just said state pulling a gun to your head that's what i when i say 
the state holding a gun to your head. I mean law. You're not choosing the right decision. You're not even making a decision if the state has a gun to your head. How's that a decision? So, so you don't think that it is bad for people to have the right to cheat on their spouse. But do you think that- Of course people a, should have the right to cheat on their spouse. So, but on a mass level, like a societal level, do you think here are two societies? Society A, you have um, a, a low rate of extramarital affairs and cheating. And society B, where there is a high rate, comparatively high rate of ex extramarital affairs and cheating, which is the better society? The first one, because they're free. P freedom means they're the freedom equal, to make bad choices. That freedom means the freedom to make mistakes. That's what freedom is. We're not clockwork dolls. We're just and looking, isn't the Sims. We have no, no, the you didn't freedom. answer the question. You didn't answer. One society has like 10% cheating and another society has 50% cheating. Are they both which, free? They're equal in every single way. It oh, every so, single so they're way. both, so in one society, so there's no law against cheating in either. There's no difference between the two societies. Exactly the same in, every, in terms of laws and in terms of social conventions. Everything is the same. Well, then I suppose is, it would be better to not cheat. It seems like a rude why? thing to do to your partner. Why? Because it's rude. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, because it's rude to your partner because you have standards I'm for your I'm laughing because it's like a kind of understatement to say no, that. No, that's it. That's it. It's yeah, it's rude. It's like a violation of their trust. Yeah, it's rude. Yeah, violation of trust is something serious. But the, but the yeah. point is that you're you're acknowledging that the the society with lower extramarital affairs is better. Well, guess what? Porn usage will increase the amount of extramarital affairs in society. That's interesting because I'm looking at a study right now which indicates that, hold on, across these samples we found consistent evidence that partners who watch pornography together report higher relationship and sexual satisfaction than partners who do not. Notably, this association was not moderated by gender. So this is, um, <clears throat> this is um, associations between relationship quality and pornography use depend on contextual patterns of use within the couple. Uh, Kohut et al. And it seems like, so the problem is like a lot of the stuff you've said to me feels kind of like sussy. I bet if I looked through your studies, I'd be able to tear a few of them apart because I have the, um, the degree to do so. But like just looking through some of this modern stuff, like the idea like one hit of looking at porn at 10 will ruin your life and you won't be able to fucking love. Like the degree of narrativization that you've engaged in here indicates to me that obviously like these studies are a means to an end for you. But we're talking about not just one or two people. We're talking about millions, hundreds of millions. And that creates a cumulative effect that has an impact on the character well, of society. According to this, watching porn together makes the relationship better. So do you think it should be illegal to not watch porn together with your partner? So now, cited, now, so that, there's, there's now that we found evidence that watching porn with your partner is good for society, you should be in favor of the state forcing you to jerk off together with your partner while watching like, um, like, like some girl getting like spit roasted, right? No, you have like one study I cited three, but you look, I, I'll acknowledge that there is going to be studies that will, you know, point out what you just read, but a look, means to an end initially, you know, the science was out on whether smoking is bad for you or not. You could find studies that said smoking was actually great, would make your life so much better if you Wait, smoke. Are 10 you packs seriously a day. comparing? So that's, yeah, I am comparing. But your fact, studies I would are say older. pornography is much more harmful than smoking. Actually, <laughs> I go, I go that far. Okay, I, I know you would because you sound like a dare officer, like one hit of porn and your life is over. Like you, you're coming out again, like this is what I mean. The empirics for you are a means to an end. Like you, all the studies in the world could indicate that it's beneficial for society and you would oppose it, right? Ejaculation is something that's necessary and ejaculating with your uh, loving wife, that produces a kind of hormonal response that is really beneficial for your relationship. It creates these feelings of, companionship and pair bonding that doesn't happen with masturbation. So yes, ejaculation uh, is necessary biologically. It's important. It helps with all kinds of endorphins and, and feelings of happiness. Uh, it's just that much better when it's, when you have a person to do it with. I don't, um, I don't disagree with that at all. I just like a reminder that um, if you want to just like quickly boil some ramen so you can just have it real quick while doing some homework, like that's food, but it doesn't feel that good. But if you make like a nice home cooked meal and you have it with a friend, then there are lots of social receptors in your brain that pair bond uh, either in a romantic or social sense and make it better there. I'm just pointing out like this phenomena exists in almost everything we do. Sex is a social activity, of course. So a lot of the exacerbating factors associated with it versus like doing the solo version on your own, uh, like those are going to be present for a lot of different things. Uh, we literally do like release different brain chemicals when we're like hanging out with a friend, having a good meal.
uh, than if we're just eating on our own. You know, it's just, uh, you be with people. <laughs> yeah, that's the lesson, right? Be with people, you know? But I don't think you're, I don't think the best way to get people to have meals with others is to like deny them the home ramen, you know? Like, you, you can't, you can't be like, um, all right, well, it's better for you to go eat with another person, so fucking starve until you do, you know? Muslim men, of course, being such coomers that they need morality police to make sure women aren't exposing their faces because they can't control themselves in the presence of a female flesh. You know, that's the healthiest attitude one might take towards, uh, you know, the opposite sex, but whatever template we want to go with.